Well, we are in the workshop of Mr. Matthew Mungle. Mr. Mungle. Hey, how are you? I'm doing all right. And I was hoping we had a lot of questions on the YouTube channel about core molds. So I was hoping you would be so kind as to share some core knowledge and I, not knowledge, not basic <laughs> mold making knowledge, but core mold information. The special stuff. The I would spe love to. Yes. Well, come over here. I've got this mold, this hand mold, and I made it for my prosthetic lab workbook and it's all covered in the book and what I did this is the negative as you see one side of the negative the other side and then the hand now the hand because when you have a silicone hand on a glove on a full hand you can't get it off because of the thumb so you have to cut and replace the fingers onto the mold so you can get it off and pull the glove off like that. You see? Excellent. Okay. And this technique was mastered by Mike McCracken Sr. for, I think he was working on uh, one of Rick Baker's shows. So anyway, this is... This is how it's all put together, like that. Excellent. And so, and one of the things I've talked about a little bit on my channel is the kind of the, the thinking, the mold planning that you got to do with something like this, and thinking in terms of the casting material and then working backwards from that. So in this case, I know you're casting silicone mm -hmm. to make those, those hands. So let's go back a little bit uh, to the beginning. The hand was cast in a low moisture alginate and then 1630 was poured into that to to render a hand cast for that then before I even sculpted on it it was cut into pieces so I could get them off and we can get the glove off once the silicone glove is finished okay so all that's done before any sculpting anything any else sculpting takes started place. and I left all the texture onto it before I sculpted it because I wanted to shave it down after the fact, after I pulled the, the hand out of the sculpture, out of the mold. So in other words, there, were, there was texture on this, you saw the fingernails, etc., etc. I sculpted onto that, and then once the mold was done, I pulled it out, cleaned it up, and sanded this down so the glove would fit extremely tight on the actor's hand. So it had movement. Okay. To it. And then your negative. So that was 16. This is 1630. 1630. Okay. And 1630, right. of course, is I've shown it on this channel, but just for those that haven't seen that video, that is a very moisture resistant resin system okay. that can be poured directly into an alginate mold. Exactly. So, yes. By BJB. By Wonderful BJB. BJB yes. Enterprises. So then once I've sculpted it, I put the dam onto it, all the way on the side, or all around the fingers, which takes a lot of time because you want to make sure that your angle is at a 90 degree angle on, on, the, on your sculpt all the way around. You can't have a 30 degree angle or whatever you know, angle. It has to be 90 degrees because you, you're going to make the other side and it has to come off and not break this area and have a big seam on it. Right, and you don't want that pinching that core or you know, pinching it as it's coming in or... No, off. not at all, not at all. And, and then um, keys were drilled in. So for the injection, I drilled a hole in here okay. for the material to come in. And this is the injection hole because I wanted to make sure that the silicone got in really fast before it's set up. This is removable too, by the way, the injection. Got it. Right there. So, and, and, and as you said, there's a lot of planning that goes into this, a lot of thought. Uh, I've got to do this first, and it's all in steps. You can't do step one and go to step five and then go back to step three. You've got to go one, two, three, four, five. 
Well, and everything has to be compatible. So with the platinum silicone, you don't wind up with a beautiful, no. inexpensive mold that then doesn't work with the product, or a beautiful, exactly. expensive mold that doesn't exactly. work with the product. So for the for the for the negative mold, I use sixteen thirty. For uh, once, once the clay mold was done around here, and it's all documented in the book, um, do the dividing wall. Then I built a wall, a dam around the whole thing, so it would hold the material in, so I could pour it and just let it set. What I used was 1630 as the first coat. As you say, this is 1630. Okay. And the outside is another product, but it's very similar to BR75D. Okay. Which thickens as you mix it, so you can spatulate it on and make a great mold with this. Now, your clay wall that you've got that you're dividing these, yes. is this, um, was this a water-based clay or oil-based clay typically? No, I because I wanted to take my time with it, I didn't use a water-based clay because it takes, it starts to crack over time. So I use a, a version of clean clay or a, a Protolina, protolina okay. clay. Yeah, soft protolina clay, which yeah, clean is clay easy is, to do. <laughs> clean yeah, clay, clay is, is, a, is the old, from the old country. <laughs> yeah, the, the old country. The old country. Uh, just picture this with the sculpting on it and the, the clay wall around it. And this is already poured, this side. Okay. So I turn it over, pull the clay up very carefully not to hurt any of the sculpture, to make sure I've got a great closure on both negative, both negatives. Turn this over, if you can envision, and you'll see it in the book, uh, the sculpture, the clay wall, very carefully pull up the clay wall, clean the sculpture up a little bit if you have to, build walls around this, a dam, per se, and, um, and then repeat the whole process that you used on this side to make this negative, like so. Beautiful. And then when you're casting this, and you're putting a reinforcement fabric on, uh, okay. because I was looking at your pictures in your book, yeah. and you had you you did the reinforcement on it, um, and then you're pouring, uh, you're pouring the silicone to yeah. then encapsulate all of that. So I basically use pantyhose okay kind of a thickish pantyhose pulled it over cut it glued it uh, together um, I glued it together with silicone a fast setting silicone okay. just to make sure I had it on and it wasn't going to slip the reason to doing the reinforcement is you you don't want the glove to to, to tear now if you wanted more strength, more, not necessarily strength, but movement in it, I would negate the, um, the, the reinforcement, the pantyhose, because the pantyhose kind of stiffens the silicone a little bit, and it got, doesn't give you very good, you know, movement. So, but you, then you have to be very careful the way you demold it. However, the, the, the 1500, the 5100 is is a great product in that it has strength to it so you could get away with that you know and these were when these gloves were just that they were just gloves they weren't they were here they weren't glued yep. on yeah. or anything like that so yeah. this is purely just a glove that exactly. he can literally slide on and off his hand exactly. reuse and so basically this is the glove that came out of that mold okay and as you see, you can hardly see the pantyhose in there, but it's in there. Now, as I said, it does inhibit the strength, not the strength, but the stretchability of it a little bit. So if you wanted a glove that's a little bit more mobile, then I would negate the, um, the pantyhose. And this was painted with caulking silicone, thinned with um, uh, naphtha, or a facsimile of naphtha if you can't get naphtha. And of course, to paint silicone, there's a lot of steps in it. And the first step is to get any separator from the mold 
and I use Vaseline most of the time in the mold because the separation is just perfect. It just comes right out. Even though silicone doesn't want to stick to this, you still have to have a separator. It makes your job much easier to get the mold out of there. And then what would you, would typically when you use Vaseline as a separator, what do you use to clean your part okay. to prep for painting? So the first thing I do is wash it at least two to three times with soap and water. And it's got to be dish, dish, dish soap, dishwashing soap, like Dawn, that gets grease off. And scrub, scrub the heck out of it because you want to get all of that, 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 petroleum jelly off of it and then clean it with acetone or naphtha or facsimile of naphtha if you can't get naphtha. I know it's been banned in a certain states. So and then once once that's done, you can actually touch it and it does it does feel a little tacky and that's what you want because you want a tackiness for the silicone paint to stick. So then I'll mix my uh, caulking silicone with naphtha a little bit and then add colors into it as I, as I airbrush it in or flick it on with a brush or airbrush. I think most of this was done by hand, but there is some airbrushing here and there. And then, then I used acrylic nails and glued them on with caulking silicone. Oh, wow. I didn't even realize those yeah. were okay. So yeah. I'm good. Yeah, I didn't okay. sculpt the nails on there. I wanted to make sure they were acrylic nails. So. And, and this would be a good time to explain the the character that you were doing this on because I, oh, you know, yeah. I, some people are going to see this and be like, what? Okay, what is this for? What, what is this? This was for my comical Frankenstein. I've always wanted to do a Frankenstein that has a really tall head. And I did it. Well, Matthew, I really appreciate you sharing this information with me. This, again, is the core mold is one of those things I get a lot of questions about, especially uh, hand molds, uh, hand core molds for gloves. So, um, and for those that really want to dive, do a deep dive in this, I know we've, we've crammed a lot into this video, but there is even more right here in Matthew Mungle's book. And this, of course, is the Prosthetic Lab Workbook. And... Uh, Hey, who's that? Who's that? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> and and it's all covered in here. Molding the sculpted hands. Everything we talked about is all in here, plus more. I was very thorough in step by step. I think I went over this process. Once I had it all done, I think I must have gone and proofread this at least ten times to make sure everything was great in here. Then it goes on to teeth the teeth and also then pouring, yes. prepping and pouring the hands. So it's all covered in here. It's a great book. <laughs> Lots of knowledge in here. I've always wanted to do this. And I will put the link to your book in the video description. So I we'll do put that in there. That. And uh, again, all of you that are curious about core molds, just know, obviously there's a limit to how much I can cram into a YouTube video because this really, to give this the proper treatment it deserves, would be probably a few hours worth of a, a tutorial. But uh, Mr. Mungle has already done the legwork on that right here. So anyway, again, Mr. Mungle, thanks a lot. I appreciate you letting me come play in your shop. And uh, yeah. We'll, I can't thank we'll, you enough. We'll definitely have to do it again. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Okay.